Welcome back everyone to Racing Reviews and welcome back to another episode of our Formula One 2020 Team Debriefs. Today, our penultimate episode, we will be focused on Haas F1, a difficult season both off and on track, a terrible car, ninth in the constructors standings, just three points across the entire 2020 season, room for improvement going into 2021. However, with an all new driver lineup, what will the future hold for the US based team? As always, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. 2021 content is just around the corner. So if you're looking forward to that, as always, subscribe button is down below. Leaving a like massively helps out the channel. It would be very much appreciated. But let's talk about Haas, a team that had an incredible 2018, stepped backwards in 2019 in the rich energy saga, but something that was apparent in the pre-season winter testing of 2020 is the drivers and the team felt they had a car that was better than 2019, a car that they finally understood how it worked, they finally understood how to get the tyres on and off, so surely that would mean a car that could regularly fight for points, maybe, just maybe, fight for Q3 on a regular basis. That was not the case. That was far from the case for Haas F1 in 2020. That somehow went backwards again compared to 2019. Not once did either Roman Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen or Pietro Fittipaldi make it into Q3 with only a handful of Q2 appearances scattered across the season. One points finish for both Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean, a season best of ninth, really highlights the issues this team are having. And as the season progressed last year, things just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. Lots and lots of work to do for Haas F1 over the winter because during 2020, there are almost no highlights, which is a real shame considering both Romain Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen have ended their time with the team and it's very likely both will end their Formula 1 careers at the end of last season. I'm going to start nice and early today with our tier list. So far, it looks like this for our teams with Mercedes, the only team in legendary. Great for McLaren and Alfred Sauri. Good for Racing Point Renault and our newest entrant, Red Bull from yesterday. Alfa Romeo and Williams are in the bad category. Haas F1 will join them. Not quite been. Not quite been. I was very close to putting it down there, but they did score points. And actually, they could have scored more points if not for that silly ruling, that silly penalty at the Hungarian Grand Prix. So not all was lost. There were moments of brilliance from both drivers, but from a team perspective, especially with their driver decision for next year, been, it wasn't far off. That's for sure. But I want to talk about the drivers. I really want to talk about the drivers because both of them hung up their Formula One boots most likely for good at the end of last year. And I think both of them will end their Formula One careers knowing they still had a little bit more to give, knowing there was still that little bit of potential that was never quite reached. For Kevin Magnussen, that one podium in his Grand Prix debut all the way back in 2014 for McLaren. After that season, was never in machinery anywhere close to fighting for another podium. And after an incredible 2018, an OK 2019 and an OK 2020, I feel he's been quite hard done by. And I think alongside Mick Schumacher would have made a really nice balance of youth, excitement, but also someone with that experience, with that fire, with that determination to prove themselves up against a young hotshot like Schumacher. But for Kevin to leave on the sour note of 2020, feels unjust. One point finished, one point in 2020. It was that race in Hungary I mentioned a minute ago. An incredible drive from Magnussen on that particular day. My driver of the day at the Hungarian Grand Prix. But apart from that, nowhere near the points for the rest of the season. That car had nowhere near the potential to be anywhere near the points. And actually, for the first time, Across an entire Formula 1 season, I think both Haas F1 drivers were super consistent. 
The car didn't really help them get anywhere near points, but both drivers kept things clean. And actually, what they did give us was one of the closest driver head-to-heads across the entire field in 2020. Which I feel is quite fitting, considering they both weren't given that opportunity to prove themselves in 2021. And I forgot to do the head-to-head. So let's do it now. We spoke about K-Mag, we'll do our head-to-head, then we'll move on to our other final Haas F1 drivers, Roman Grosjean and Fittipaldi. But our two mainstays, K-Mag and Rogro, their stats look a little bit like this. Look how close these are. It is mental. 8-7 in qualifying in favour of Kevin Magnussen. Average qualifying, 16.8. Grosjean, 17 flat. That is mad. So, so close between the two of them. The race head-to-head -head then swings back into Grosjean's favour. 6-7 at the end of the season. Points, just one between them. Two for Roman, one for Kevin. A best qualifying of 14th for Grosjean. Beats Magnussen of 15th and best race finish. 10th for K-Mag, 9th for Grosjean. Those stats are so, so close. I'm so gutted. Both of these drivers won't be in F1 next year. For Roman, as a massive fan of Roman Grosjean, I'm sure many of you already have seen my video about a month ago now. Thank you, Roman Grosjean. It will be weird watching Formula One without him there. It's been a difficult couple of seasons, but 2020, I think, was his best for a little while. Super consistent. Constantly there fighting with Kevin Magnussen, fighting with the Alfa Romeos, ding dong with George Russell. That race in Mugello alone, so, so special. Those two points in Germany were awesome. Loved watching those final few laps after the safety car. Of course, those awful scenes in the closing stages of the 2020 season, no one wants to relive. But Roman's still with us. He's still hungry. Rumours he wants to go to IndyCar, and that's all I can ask. Of course, I will massively miss him in Formula 1. And his final season? I don't think was all that bad. And our final driver, before we jump into our tier list, debutant Pietro Fittipaldi. I did not expect him to race in 2020, and in all fairness to him, the kid did good. Now, yes, he was at the back of the field. Yes, he was out-qualified and out-raced by Kevin Magnussen in both races. They were together. But in what was the worst car on the grid by that point of the season, I think he did a really solid job. Considering he didn't have the experience in Formula 2, hadn't actually driven a race in three years, I think he did a mega job. I don't think Haas could have asked for much more under the circumstances and with such a quick turnaround needed. So, fair play, Pietro Fittipaldi. I don't think we'll see him back in Formula 1 for quite some time unless they need a very quick stand-in at the last moment. But I think Pietro did a really good job and I think deserves a little bit more credit than I'm seeing. Certainly as good as Jack Aitken, not quite on the levels of the Hulk. But I was very impressed with young Pietro Fittipaldi. And on that note, let's jump over to the tier list. So far, it looks like this. It is massive, so I'm not going to go through each driver, but it looks like that. With Checo Perez, Hamilton and Russell in legendary, and Alex Albon. I can't believe I did it. I put him in the bad category. He's there on his own at the moment. But with the Haas drivers, there's three of them. I have gone with this. I had to do it. I'm biased. I will take it. I will take the flack in the comments down below. But my man Roman Grosjean in his last season in Formula 1, legendary. He'll always be legendary to me. Has to be in the legendary category. For the other two, K-Mag and Fittipaldi, I, again, I kind of feel disappointed I've done this, but I've put them in average. K-Mag, consistent all season long, but what more could he do? in that terrible car that went backwards over the course of last year. Just one point. Oh, just so frustrated he's not got a seat next year. And Pietro. Two races, nothing mega special in both of them. But like Jack Aitken, 
they'll have put alongside him just really solid debuts under the circumstances. And that is it for today's episode. One more to go tomorrow. It's going to be a juicy one. It's the turn of Ferrari. Hopefully, I'll see you all there. Thank you all very much for watching. Subscribe if you are new and enjoyed. Like button really helps out the channel. Thanks, guys. And I hope to see you all in the next one.